So when we talk about uh, the advantages of dry grinding, we're really talking about a combination of dry grinding and the methods of classification that we use. So F.L. Schmidt has a, has a large line of air classifiers, including dynamic air classifiers, uh, which can steepen the product curve. And what I mean by that is uh, the ultrafines that can be problematic downstream uh, are virtually eliminated. So that can help uh, with recovery and classification. It can also help in the dewatering process uh, downstream for dry sack tailings, for example. The vertical roller mill is, we would classify it as a dry grinding tool. So it's not set up or equipped to handle wet process. It is a horizontal table. So if you feed truly wet material into the machine, it's just gonna run off the edges and out of the machine. It can handle a certain moisture content, I would say. So in, in cement, for example, we can, we can feed uh, the mill up to 18 to 20% moisture and drive that off with the heat that's coming into the mill for the process. Uh, in overflow mode, where you're just letting the material grind and then fall off the end and catch it and convey it mechanically, uh, we've done tests up to 8 to 10% moisture and the material is ground and, and flowed normally. So not truly wet, we'll call it damp, damp applications it can handle. So currently our uh, vertical roller mill technology lies in the cement group and almost all of our applications are in cement or cement-based uh, opportunities. We are looking to migrate uh, this machine into mining, specifically the, our OK mill, which we believe is the best of the vertical roller mills uh, available today. And we're looking at several options on the flow sheet, for example, as a primary grinding tool uh, ahead of uh, a ball mill, for example, in finished grinding applications where it can replace potentially a sag mill and a ball mill and provide a finished material, or even pebble crushing. Uh, the thing we like about the pebble crushing application is that it can accept a larger feed than you know, the HPGR. So what you're doing is you, you can feed the pebbles directly to the vertical roller mill, run it in overflow mode, because it is a damp uh, kind, of, kind of feed, screen the material at about six to 10 millimeters, and then that product is fine enough to be forwarded onto the ball mill. So you're bypassing the sag mill entirely with the processed pebbles with one machine. The advantages of using HPGR in different grinding circuits uh, it's a highly efficient tool. So you think about in comparison to horizontal grinding mills, for example, there's a lot of random action that goes on inside these mills. Uh, they're very effective, but they do waste a lot of energy. HPGR is extremely efficient. Uh, so it reduces your power costs, power consumption. It reduces or can eliminate the need for a uh, grinding medium. So grinding balls are, are a big consumption uh, and a big OPEX cost. So if you can reduce or eliminate that, everybody's happy. So I think uh, that, that's primarily where I see the HPGR having its, its biggest contribution to mining flow sheets. So on the subject of how the OK mill and the HPGR fit into our Mission Zero initiative. Our Mission Zero initiative is a three-pronged approach. Uh, zero emissions, zero wasted energy, zero wasted water. Uh, both of these tools are dry grinding so that it won't waste any water. Uh, they're two of the most efficient comminution tools we have, so there's no waste of power. And the emissions part of it, while it isn't immediately obvious, uh, there are a fair amount of emissions that are produced when you're talking about the production of grinding media. Roughly 1.9 tons of carbon dioxide are produced for one ton of grinding balls. So if you can reduce or eliminate the grinding media, thereby eliminating the uh, downstream emissions associated with, with making the uh, grinding media.